We've got the Land Rover Defender 90, the two-door version. Is it two doors or three doors? Well, I guess three doors. Or is it two doors? You decide. Let's get in and go for a drive. Oh boy. Ooh, supercharged. Supercharged and turbocharged, right? Uh -huh. It's got both. Well, kind of getting ahead of ourselves here. What's under the hood of this Defender? A three liter supercharged, turbocharged inline six with a mild hybrid system and an eight speed automatic transmission. 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive, and you have to put premium fuel in this Defender. You get about 716 kilometers. 445 miles to every fill. Now you would think with it being an inline six, first of all, that's a good choice. And then you turbocharge it and supercharge it, you would eliminate turbo lag. Yeah. But no, there is turbo lag with still this. Still is, yeah, yeah, still is. We were actually surprised. We're like, is this the supercharged, turbocharged yeah. engine? It is, and there is turbo lag. But the best way to get around it is pop it into sport mode, mm. but then it uses more gas. Mm -hmm. So about a year and a half ago, we mm -hmm. drove the Defender 110 when it first came out. This is the two or three door version. What do you get with this? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a 10 inch touchscreen, a 12.3 inch digital driver display, heated seats, a heated steering wheel, a wireless charger, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a Meridian sound system, a panoramic sunroof, 3D surround camera and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. There are so many different things you can choose on this. There's off-road grass, gravel, yeah. mud, sand, rock, <laughs> wading, <laughs> configurable. We got a lot. And what are we going to put it in? Going to put it in S for subscribe and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe. Most important thing is to hit that notification bell, but also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. We've got the available air suspension and adaptive damping on our Defender. It's an added feature. It also comes standard with terrain response. It allows you to pick and choose what terrain programs you want based on the road conditions you're dealing with. We have the available terrain response too, which you can put it into automatic mode and let the Defender decide for you what terrain program best suits the conditions that you're dealing with. I went on a Range Rover event in um, Arizona going mm. through this rocky countryside and we had an instructor with us mm -hmm. and his advice if you have the optional setting yeah. is to just put it in auto. He yeah. said it's such a good program that it does everything on its own. Now one thing that you've got to remember uh, who's owned this company in the past Ford has owned it yeah. and you see a lot of those terrain settings that they now use in the in, Bronco in their vehicles. Yeah. BMW used to own this company. Now you can see things like hill descent control and terrain management yeah. in their products. So this is a company that really pioneered all of this stuff decades ago and they should get credit for it. So would you get the coil springs or the air suspension? I would get the air suspension and the adaptive damping. I actually find that it really has a comfortable drive to it. I find it a little bit top heavy in the city. So that adaptive damping gives more precise control and eliminate some of that body roll that you would expect for such a large vehicle like this, height-wise. So the, there's two settings that this system has that people don't often talk about. It has a mall and outlet mall. And that's really where these things are going to oh, kind of go. I mean, I how know. many people are actually going to take this thing and do the things it's designed to do? Yeah. I say very, very few of them. Mall and outlet mall are the two settings I think would get used the most. Probably. I'm sure that there are some people that are taking this off-road. And Land Rover says that this is the most capable and durable vehicle that it has ever built. Now, this comes with a ride height with the coil suspension of 8.9 inches. With the air suspension, it's 8.5 inches, but you get to add an extra three inches of that to 11.5 inches. Now and guys, who wouldn't want to add an extra three inches? So 
I mean, really, right? Come on, like, do the math on that. <laughs> Spend the money, get the extra inches. And the water depth is 35.4 inches, which is excellent. You know, very good there. I don't care about all of that stuff, Andrea. Mm, you, you don't? Know, no, you know what I want? What? I want this because it looks so damn cool. Zach is in love with this. This, this is uh, like a toy truck I would have as a kid. It's like a truck. Yeah. I would go, and now there's like a real version of it. I like the look of this as well. It's just not practical as a two door. <laughs> we'll get into the back seat in a bit, but it comes standard with LED headlights and LED tail lights, fog lights, 18 inch to 22 inch wheels, standard 20 inch wheels. It has standard all season tires, but of course you can opt for off road if you like. This one has the roof rack on the top. That mm -hmm. just makes it look cooler. It's got the box on the side, which is kind of ridiculous, but you know, I, I wouldn't get that, but some people might think that's very cool. Yeah. It's got the really cool mud flaps mm -hmm. that make me feel like I'm going on the Perry Dakar rally <laughs> when really I'm just going to the outlet mall. But hey, that's cool too. The look of this thing, I mean, uh, Land Rover does a fantastic job on yeah. all of the Land Rover Range Rover products. They just look cool. Yeah, they do. Actually, uh, and very copied. Like you think yeah. about the Range Rovers, yeah. they've been copied like by Kia yeah. and Volvo. I mean, they're really innovative. Yeah, very unique looking vehicle for sure. Now we have a full size spare tire back there, which is nice to have, but boy, does it ever affect the visibility of the vehicle. And then the headrest as well, mm -hmm. between the headrest and the spare tire, yeah, limited visibility out the back for sure. All <laughs> right, uh, the doors are big. Of course, this is a two or three door, depends what you want to call it, but the, the doors to get in are absolutely massive and heavy. Yeah. It's a real retro thing. This reminds me of cars when I was a kid, two door cars were very popular. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cool. I really like what Land Rover has done to the interior of this. It has leather seats, but a canvas style trim. So it's easy to wipe down the materials in here. And the floors are not carpet. There's a, there's floor mats on yeah. top of it, but they're actually rubberized. You've got this big piece of reinforced metal behind the dashboard that has Defender embossed in it. Yeah. And then lots and lots and lots of storage areas. That's very well laid out. I find the the reach to the radio a bit far and it's on the mm. other side of the shifter so ergonomically that's not perfect but I, I can get past all of that because I'm so cool driving this. I really think that Land Rover does a great job with the comfort level in this vehicle. I think that the seats are comfortable. They really cradle your body. I can see it being comfortable on a long trip. I like the steering wheel feel, and I also enjoy sitting up and over the dash in this vehicle. Yeah, they call it the command seating position. That's one of the hallmarks of Land Rover, Range Rover, and why a lot of people come back to this brand just because of the seating position. The back seat is enormous. It's the getting in and out is a bit tricky. The front seats have a caddy system that toggles the seats forward and back electronically. That's helpful, but climbing in and out is a bit clumsy and a bit claustrophobic when you're back there. Sure, there's loads of leg room, but you feel kind of trapped in there, especially with that box down the side. And then when it comes to cargo space, it's really lacking there, very tiny. If you have a full load, you're going to need to get some sort of storage unit on top of the roof because you're not gonna fit all of your luggage in there. I don't think you could even get two carry-ons back there. No. Like we can fit our camera bag and a tripod barely and that's it. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is when you fold the seats down, you would think they would engineer it to be perfectly flat so you get a massive amount of storage space because the back seat is so big, yeah. but it doesn't. It, it tilts on an angle. It's a, it's a weird setup and that part you have to just get your head around that you're driving something so cool but not the most functional. So who is gonna buy this thing? Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Definitely a design to attract the retro set. This has become really important to attract with a nameplate with history. Do you feel this is a great strategy or not trying hard enough to move design forward? I think that this design is fantastic. Uh, it's so all, unique. All I wanna say mm. is I want one. He really likes this Yeah, sack. I really like this. You know what? It is so cool. If I was a younger man and I had a, say you're a professional, you could afford this, put it that yeah. way. You had mm -hmm. a job, maybe you're a young lawyer or a young dentist or a doctor, and you thought, mm -hmm. I want something cool. This would be high on my list. I would lease it. I wouldn't worry about it. 
I would just give it back after three years, but this is cool as hell. It's funny that he says that because he's always said to me he wouldn't buy a Land Rover because I would of lease a liability one. issue. I would lease one. <laughs> but I think it's pretty cool too, and I agree with Zach. I think it's going to attract the young professional Hipster. Hipster. crowd. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know the guy and- with the beard? And the tattoos and the Rolex watch, that's the guy who will buy And you this. can accessorize it any way that you want. We've got on the side that storage unit. By the way, it doesn't affect visibility. Somebody asked that on it Instagram. It does a little bit. It's a little bit. I found it to be okay. And, and it's also ridiculously small. Like, yeah. you know, you, what are you going to put in there? Like a Subway sandwich? I don't know. I don't think hipsters do that. I think they get uh, like tacos. <sighs> Maybe. Yeah. Let's Let's move on. <laughs> Is there a V8 option? There is. It's called the P525, and it's a 5-liter V8 with 518 horsepower. It'd be a thirsty one. That Mm -hmm. engine's been around for a long time, but it's also, uh, you know, kind of like an iconic engine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they've used it in a Range Rover as well. It's it's a great motor, but this is the future, Andrea. Smaller, more efficient. Mm -hmm. And if you get the V8 in this two-door, it'll cost you over $130 thousand dollars you know a young dentist he could afford that maybe we might have some bills to pay from university still we put out a lot of content each week on the motor mouth youtube channel and it's so easy to find all you do is go to the youtube search bar and type in the name of the channel motor mouth then the brand you're looking for in this case it would be land rover or range rover and all of our videos pop up it's that easy how's the expected reliability some of the previous generations have been terrible including friends who have forced dealers to take the vehicles back under the state's lemon laws well we actually have friends who have had several Range Rovers and their last one was so bad the dealer had to take it back and they flipped them into another one Mm -hmm. but they know they love the brand so they got another one they got another one they have a mini as well I mean it's just a brand that has problems JD Power the dependability study that came out this year has Land Rover in last place so uh, there needs to be some improvement definitely with this brand lease it best advice if you like it and you're a young hipster. But there's definitely a thing, you know, pain versus pleasure here with Land Rover products where people are willing to spend that much money because it obviously gives you more pleasure than heading to the dealership and getting it repaired. Yeah, that's what our friends like. They like it so much, they're willing to put up with the pain for the pleasure. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Is Range Rover as a brand going to dive into the hybrid EV market soon? So the parent company is Jaguar Land Rover. Jaguar is going to be transitioning totally to electric vehicles in the next couple of years. And this is going to follow suit, right? Well, they are going to have an electrified version, so it won't be pure EVs with Land Rover, but they are planning on having a fully electric vehicle by 2024 and then adding five more EVs by 2026. That's at least their plan. And then by 2030, to have electrified vehicles available. There is a plug-in hybrid Range Rover available right now, and I'm happy to hear that Land Rover is gonna continue with plug-in hybrids and not just go with pure EVs. The reality is if you want a two-door version of an off-road vehicle, there's really only a couple of options, Mm -hmm. but we chose some off-road capable utilities. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Ford Bronco two-door with a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine and up to 330 horsepower. It has a starting price of just under $45,500. The Jeep Wrangler Sport two-door with a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, 285 horsepower and a starting price of $40,500. The Toyota 4Runner with a 4 liter V6 and 270 horsepower. It has a starting price of just over $47,500. The Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon with a 4-liter bi-turbo V8, 416 horsepower, and a starting price of $155,000. So there are four off-road capable vehicles for you to consider. So how much can this thing tow? It's a lot, by the way. How much gas does it drink? We'll get into all of that with our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The base model starts at just over $82,500 Canadian and just over $69,000 in the U.S. Price is tested just under $96,500 Canadian. Here's the fuel economy. 
13.5 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 10.8 on the highway. That's 17 miles per gallon city, 22 miles per gallon highway. The towing capacity is impressive at 8,200 pounds. The warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers, or 50,000 miles. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I really like the comfort level that this Defender offers. I think it's just cool as hell. I'd love to see Land Rover improve the visibility coming from the back seat and the headrest. I think they should improve their quality. Mm. That's their number one job. If you're looking for a capable vehicle that's very unique looking, look no further than the Defender 90. There are a lot of things that this doesn't do well, but people who buy this won't care about any of it. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.